Hey, if you pay attention to my channel, and I can't for the life of me figure out why the hell you would do that, but if you do, you know that recently I bought a Smith & Wesson 627. The only problem was I already owned the same gun. I had forgotten I had bought it. That tells you I must really like the gun, though, if I, on two separate occasions I actually went out and bought it. But I was like, ah, oh, crap, now I've got two of the same gun. I'm going to have to exchange this gun in. I'm going to take a loss on it. Well, luckily, Sporting System said, you know, you haven't picked the gun up yet. Your background check hasn't even come back. So we'll just take that gun off the paperwork and you can exchange it for another gun. So that's what I did. I took the extra Smith & Wesson 627 and I traded it in on this, the Smith & Wesson Model 27. Now, this is a new Model 27 from Smith's Classics line. This is not an older Model 27. If you're not familiar with the Model 27, it's one of Smith's most popular guns, one of their most successful guns ever. It's been around since the 30s. At first, it was called the Registered Magnum, and then it was called the 357 Magnum. This is also the gun the Highway Patrolman spawned from. So this has been a very successful gun for Smith, and they reintroduced it not too long ago in their Classics line, as I said, and that that's what I decided to get. I really like this gun. One of the reasons I love this gun is it's just beautiful. I mean, this high gloss blue finish here, just really pretty, especially when you take into consideration they added these really nice service style grips on here. These are almost, these are like presentation level service style grips here. So really beautiful gun overall. And like I said, it is a new gun, but it's based on an old design. So it kind of uh, marries some of the older features of the design, some of the really nice features with some modern features that are pretty nice too, and some modern features that aren't quite so nice. So let's take a close look at the gun here, look at the features, look at what features are the older ones and what features are the newer ones, which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones, and give everyone a pretty good overview of this gun. Now, one of my favorite features of this gun is the tapered barrel. As you can see there, that barrel tapers as it goes forward, starts off wider at the base where it connects to the frame and comes to more of a point at the end here. I love that tapered barrel. That's one of the design elements from the original guns and I really like that. Another original element of the gun that I really like is the ribbed back strap here. It is serrated so that you have more grip on the back strap here. Not only does it make it grippier, but it makes it look nice also. And they do carry that feature onto the front strap of the gun grip also. This is a very nice feature and it is an original feature of the Model 27. Also looking back towards the barrel of the gun again, you notice that the underlug is a three quarter style underlug with a slanted front here. It's just a really nice look with that tapered barrel. I love that and that is an original feature of the Model 27 also. Another original feature from the original guns they bring across is that ribbed face on the trigger. Gives you a really nice grippy trigger surface. Your trigger finger is not going to slip off of that. Okay, another feature they carried over from the older guns is where the engraving is and how it's done. This isn't some laser etched crap like on some of the newer guns. It's actual nice pencil line engraving and it's on the flat side of the gun or what I would consider to be the outside of the gun. The side of the gun that is showing when you're carrying it in a holster if you're right-handed. Makes a lot more sense for it to be over there and for it to look nice. So I really like the fact that they carried over that old style engraving and on the side it used to be on. The gun also retains the more original style cylinder release here, which is nice. I put the extended cylinder release on a lot of my guns. It wouldn't look right on this gun. This gun does look better with the traditional style cylinder release. Another feature this gun retains is the wide spur on the hammer. This has an oversized hammer spur that's really grippy. You're not going to have any trouble thumbing the hammer on this gun. I like this feature quite a bit. Now, the main feature that comes over from the old gun to the new gun is the number of rounds in the cylinder. This is just a six-shot revolver. Now, most in-frame guns nowadays from Smith & Wesson, and this is an in-frame, have eight shots of 357 Magnum. This just has six. Now, you might say, well, that's a bad thing, not a good thing. But if you've got old wrists like mine, you got arthritis like I do, that's actually a good thing. Because of the weight of this gun, the size of this gun being in just 357 Magnum and having that extra heavy cylinder because it's only bored for six rounds, makes this gun handle recoil like a dream. This gun is a pleasure to shoot. When you're shooting 38s in it, it literally is like a 22. And when you're shooting 357 Magnums in it, it's like 38 Special Plus P at tops. So it's really a smooth shooting gun and I love that. I'm just really enjoying this gun at the range. Now that we've looked at some of the older design features of the gun, let's talk about the modern touches of the gun and which ones are positive and which ones are negative. 
Now let's get the worst out of the way right off the bat. The worst thing about the gun is that it does include the modern day lock. A lot of people hate the lock. I really am ambivalent about the lock. I don't like it. I don't like the fact that it's there. I'd rather it not be there. And I think it looks bad, but as far as function or performance, it doesn't really affect the gun. So I don't really care about it as far as that goes, but I would rather it not be there. But on these new guns, it's there. Now, one of the more modern features of the gun that I think is definitely a positive is that the front sight is not fixed. It's not part of the actual barrel. It is removable, replaceable, and upgradable. That's a positive. That's a good thing that they've added to the gun new. Now, another positive feature about the new gun is that the firing pin is internal. It is not mounted on the hammer. That is a good thing. Internally mounted firing pins are much sturdier. They don't break as often. They don't require as much maintenance. So that's actually a positive. That modern feature right there is an upgrade in my opinion. Another feature, I don't know if you can see in there or not, but the modern guns have a transfer bar. That transfer bar is a huge safety feature. That's something I do like having in the new guns. So that's a welcome addition. Now, one other thing people might not like about the new gun is it does have the modern compression style barrel. It doesn't have a pinned barrel. A lot of people are like, oh, I like the older barrels better. They're just so much better done, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not really true. I like the pinned barrels better also because they're classic. But the only reason the barrels were pinned back in the day is because the manufacturing wasn't precise enough to make a well enough fitting barrel that it wouldn't come loose under magnum pressures or actual just constant use. So they would pin the barrels in place so they wouldn't come loose. Today, manufacturing is so precise they don't need to do that. So you might like the looks of the pinned barrel better, which I do also, so I understand that. But this barrel is no, in no way lesser. In fact, it's actually better than the original barrels so I'm going to say that that's a positive thing even though I actually do prefer the pinned barrels what you think of that is up to you so as you can see even though this is a classic gun and maintains most of the classic features it does have some modern upgrades some of which are probably not so good but most of which are actually welcome additions to the gun so in the end you end up with a really nice updated classic from Smith & Wesson now, there has been one question I've been getting asked ever since people saw that I got this gun on Instagram. They're asking me about damage to the cylinder from firing the gun because this has the screw to the front sight is right over the gap of the cylinder. It's right at the very end of the cylinder right here. So pressure builds up in that little screw channel and tends to damage the finish of the cylinder. And people have been asking me, has that been true with this gun? Well, when people were asking me that, uh, I hadn't had a chance to shoot the gun yet, so I didn't know. But now I have had a chance to shoot the gun. In fact, my son and I took it out yesterday, and even though I hated spending the ammo, we put a 100 round of Blazer Brass 38 Special through it, and then we put 50 rounds of Minute Man ammo, some really hot 357 Mag ammo through it. And the gun performed very well. Let's talk about performance of the gun before we talk about that little issue. The gun performed flawlessly. It's so easy to shoot. This heavy gun handles 38 Special like a dream, handles 357 Magnum awesomely. Just a really comfortable shooting gun and a very accurate gun. Out of the box, it was a little off to the left. I got it quickly sighted into where it was on target. And then from then on out, this gun was a blast. But as far as that damage to the top cylinder, let's take a look and see what happened. As you can see, the front of the barrel is quite dirty, but what about that cylinder? Yep, I don't know how well you all can see it there, but see right there on the center of each of these, there is a little round burn mark on the top of the cylinder, on every cylinder here. That is no bueno. Uh, that's not acceptable. I will be contacting Smith & Wesson and saying, hey, this gun's got that problem. What are you going to do about it? Uh, I might wait till after the... Uh, issues with the coronavirus are done, but I will be contacting Smith about that. That's not acceptable. But otherwise, this gun shot like a dream. So there you have it. There's a quick first look at my Smith & Wesson Model 27 from their Classics line. It is really a great gun. It does have a few little issues right now. Like I said, I don't really like the fact that it has a lock, although I can't call that an issue. And it does have that issue where it is burning the top of the cylinder. I am going to speak to Smith & Wesson about that, see what they can do about that. But like I said, first, I'm going to carry the gun for about three months, see how well it wears, see how well the finish holds up. And then after that, I'll talk to him about that cylinder, maybe get the whole gun refinished if they can fix the problem and if all that works out i think i'll have a great gun here like i said we'll carry this for a while so there's your first preliminary look at the gun i'm going to have to say from everything i've seen uh from it from the very beginning i'm going to give this gun an initial a plus rating and we'll see where it goes from there